Fingerprinting goes high-tech with the incorporation of biometrics, and Air Force Staff Sergeant Rebecca Goodwin shows us how biometrics are being used by U.S. troops in Afghanistan. Moving. Naval Lieutenant Anthony Bravo is one of the many people working behind the scenes to keep military members safe. Cool. In his case, he works with the Armed Contractors Oversight Directorate. Today we are collecting the biometrics or the life measurements of potential armed security guards. So what we were doing was collecting photographs, iris scans, and fingerprints. And cool. while collecting this information, it's best to not take any shortcuts. It's sweaty. It's hot. It is imperative that when somebody's performing a biometric enrollment that they complete the minimum acceptable standard. Ten fingerprints, yeah. two irises, and a major. facial photograph. The reason is it's important is any finger can, be, can leave a fingerprint. Once the fingerprint is in the system, it can be identified. The reason this is important is somebody makes an IED and it is an unexploded ordinance, and even from exploded ordinance, forensics have the ability to pull fingerprints themselves. Therefore, if a fingerprint has been identified on a, on an unexploded ordinance, for example, and then co-located with somebody who's trying to obtain employment as an armed security guard, they will be identified as a threat, change their name, but they can't change their biometrics. It's fixed for life. And by using biometrics to identify potential threats, Lieutenant Bravo is helping military members stay safe. Air Force Staff Sergeant Rebecca Goodwin, Kabul, Afghanistan.